fishing, it's fine, but hooking is the only way. We're going to show you how to catch some fish today. Hey guys, Kokanee fishing is red hot. So basically these are landlocked salmon. They're in a salmon family. They're some of the best table fare. I really love eating them. And I'm, this is uh, out of, I'm doing three series. I've already did one. This one, the second series is gonna be about how you set everything up and how you get it out and how you catch them. And I'm gonna show you whether your boat is hot. So like if you have a hot boat, you will not catch anything. So watch the end, cause I'm gonna show you how to check it. Then on my third video, I'm gonna show you exclusively how to rig your tackle. I have a lot of tricks that I use and I'm gonna show you guys everything. So the third one's gonna be on strictly on tackle. And there's a lot of tackle when you have to go coconut fishing. So if you like this video and the contents that I'm doing, hit the like button because it lets me know, you know that I'm doing it right and that you're learning something. Also, if you would, please subscribe because it'll help me down the road. It'll help my YouTube channel out. And I hope just watching these videos on Kokanee, for instance, because I'm doing three of them because there's so much involved in, in setting up and having the right bait and your, your leader length and everything. And I'm gonna show it all to you. So watch all three of these videos so here we go, I'm gonna show you all about kokanee fishing. So when you go after these kokanee, especially this time of the year, so the season runs usually through uh, May through August, maybe September, depending on the lake. But you could come out here right now and you don't really need a downrigger, but I do have them because you will need them eventually. So one of the things I do is I use lead core line and um, Basically, you don't have to have any fancy stuff. You just put this thing out and you'll be able to catch fish. And then when the fish move down deeper, then you're gonna have to go to the downrigger. So let me show you exactly how I do this. So this is a lead core setup. I basically like to use a glass rod that has a lot of flexibility to it. And I use 12 pound test lead core because the lead core comes in different pound test line this is lead core every 10 yards it has a different color so I know how many colors I'm going out guys that use lead core they when they talk about it they'll tell you I'm out two colors well that means two different color changes so then when I pick my dodger I'm gonna pick one a little bit bigger than I would use on a downrigger so this one is a five inch instead of a four inch remember that leader length very crucial that this leader length is only one and a half times the length of that dodger. So you want to keep them short. When you unroll this out of a package, it comes with a three foot leader. You don't just tie that onto the end. You cut it off and you only make it one and a half times. Because what it does is when the leader is too long, this lure doesn't flip around. You shorten it up, the more shorter it is, the more violent it gets. So when the fish are responding to uh, more violent one, then I'll use a shorter leader. I'll even shorten this one up sometimes. And then also the shortness and how far you do your setback. Always remember, the shorter here, the more radical. Same thing when you put it on a downrigger. So here, I'm gonna set this lead core one out. So I have my trusty corn. You have to use Jolly Green Giant shoe peg corn. And what I do is I take uh, any kind of tuna fish like sun kissed or chicken of the sea but you want to get the one that's in oil so you take that oil in the can and you pour it in the corn and mix it up and then I also put a scent um, kokanee special and then sometimes I'll add garlic to it so usually I'll bring one with garlic and one without so this is what I call the crown of a corn and you poke the hook right through the top through the corn and shoe peg corn, the center doesn't come out. If you use regular corn, all the center will come out immediately. So I grab two kernels. I'm gonna put one on each hook. So I go through the top of the crown like that. And you're all set to let it out. Okay, this is lead core now. So I got it out, push the free spool button. I'm letting the line out and you're gonna see the color. 
So there goes the first color, that's gray. And we're at mid-morning now, so I'm gonna go probably about three colors out. So we're coming to the second. So each color that goes out, I'm getting probably around six to eight feet in depth. So me going out three colors here, I'm gonna be out probably around 18 to 20 feet deep. So I see that third color go out, I lock the reel, I stick it in here in the rod holder, and you're gonna see that rod tip. You watch that rod tip, that's how I know how fast I'm going. You wanna troll about 1.2 to 1.5. So with that dodger that I have on there, you see how that tip is bouncing around. That's how I know if I got the correct speed that I'm traveling. I want that thing to be bouncing. So you're seeing that tip doing this. So I know my dodger is kicking like this, so I know I'm getting the right movement out of it. So that right there is perfect. I'm gonna go to my downrigger rod. So here I go. I got um, same thing, it's a little bit smaller dodger. I prefer using a little bit smaller one. So on my downrigger rod, I use a very flexible rod. See how flexible this is? Because basically when I get it in that downrigger, you want it loaded up. I use eight pound test mono. I use a line counter reel. So this thing has a line counter on there so I know exactly how far out my line is. So then here we go. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna bait it up. So I got double hooks. I'm gonna put one kernel to the crown and take another one, go through the crown. So I got two pieces just like that. Then you slide the hoochie back down to the bottom and then I'm gonna let it out. So basically I let it out anywhere from 30 feet to 10 feet. So I have my counter. I'm gonna set this one out here at about 15 feet. And these reels have clickers, you hear that noise? So that will keep the reel from backlashing when I set it in the downrigger. So then I, I always pull this clip off because it's a lot easier. You want to put this in about no more than halfway. See that center dot? I want it right on the edge of that dot. And then I reach over, snap it on the cable. Got the reel free spoot on clicker and I let it down. And you can tell on the downriggers, they have a counter on the side here. So it's going down, you can see it going down, and I count it down. And I see the fish on the meter right at about 46 feet. So I'm gonna go down about 44 feet. So I watch those numbers. And get it down to about 44, and then I stop it. I lock this. And what I do is I'm going to reel and reel until that rod tip is bent in half. And look, look, fish on right here. See this rod? Look at it. See the tip bouncing? There's a fish on here already. Just letting it down. Pull it off the release. Here he is. Fish on. Well, I got one already. Just set it down. I couldn't have had that thing down for a couple seconds. Fish on. Here it is. Nice kokanee. Usually you want to use a net when you're landing these things. So I bring it up. The mouths are real soft. So when they, a lot of times when you hook these things, they come off real easy. So they have a real soft, tender mouth to them. And see this guy's eyes, see how they're pointed down? So he's a down, he feeds going downward. Trick. God, that was quick. Oh, fish on! Oh, look at that, another fish on! No time to do nothing. This is, action is just crazy. I mean, you could come up here 
in an hour you'll be done. You'll be catching, you'll have your limit already. It's that quick. So like I was telling you guys earlier, I'm gonna show you how, how to test your downrigger to see if it's hot or not. So all you need is basically is a little voltage meter and you wanna set it on the lowest setting that you can set it on. And you want it on DC voltage. So then I put my meter here. And then while you have the downrigger cable in the water, trolling speed, you ground it. So I'm gonna, this is aluminum bowl so I could ground it right here. And then you just touch the positive onto the cable. And look, I'm reading 0.6 volts, a half a volt. So Canon downriggers, if you have electric, they automatically will give you five to six volts. So here I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna reverse the polarity on here real quick. Now look what that meter says. You see that minus 0.63? You see the minus on the left-hand side? You have a hot boat. You are not gonna catch anything. So I'm gonna switch it back now. Put the negative where it's supposed to be, put the positive. I'm running a half a volt. So if you have a negative charge coming off that cable, you're not gonna catch very many fish. I don't care what kind of fish you're catching. So negative charge, when you get a negative field off that cable, they just go around you. They will stay away from the back of your boat and you won't catch anything. So the only company that I know of that makes something that you could fix it is Scotty and it's called a black box. You put that on, it actually goes, there's an end that goes around the cable travels through and there's a box that you control and you can control exactly how much voltage coming off your line. So, but if you have a Canon Electric, you have no problem. The other downriggers, and this could also happen on a manual downrigger. Just because you have a manual, you could still have a negative charge. So get it, have a little meter like this and test it and you, at least you'll know that's not your problem because you're not catching any fish. Could be your tackle, could be your corn. Oh, nice fish. Here we go, we just had a double. So you guys need to get your butts out here and start catching some some kokanee. And they're very good table fare. And this is the time of year to do it. So just get out there. I'm doing an English survey today and okay. I wanted to know how you guys would rate your experience fishing today. One to five, five being the best. Huh? 10. 10? Easy. <laughs> Yeah, you we guys, had a great day. Yeah, a good day out there? Yeah. Was, was the bite hot? Were they, oh, yeah. Yeah? Two, three on all of them. Yeah? Really? That's, that's pretty good. I mean, yeah. and how would you guys rate the number of fish you guys caught? One to five. Five being the best. Number? Yeah, like quantity. Quantity? Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen? Oh, man, you are giving it up. <laughs> and what about size of fish? How would you rate them? Mm, Fourteen to fifteen. Yeah? You are loving these cooking, huh? Cool. <laughs> Fishing, it's fine, but hooking is the only way. We're gonna show you how to catch some fish today.